You are listening to episode 50 of the Soulful Podcast, Her Unraveling, The Divinity Within Us, Sneak Peek, Chapter Excerpt, and Guidance from the Guides. Welcome to the Soulful Podcast. I am your host, Megan Harmony, a champion at overcoming the tough stuff and enjoying life while rising above it. Soulful living means getting to a place of ease and comfort, no matter what's happening around you. It is waking up excited about what adventures you will go on. It's connecting to the power within you as your source of strength, grace, and security. It's being uncomfortable during growth spurts and leaning into the stretch. Each week, I will share with you about my journey and the experiences I have had. I'll offer you hope and inspiration that it is possible to live a full life even when the you-know-what is hitting the fan. I believe that love is a language we can all understand and I want to inspire you to trust and believe in yourself. Your soul is hungry for more. Lean in to get soul full. Hey family and friends. I am over the moon excited to share some big news with you guys. If you're listening to this on Monday when it airs, then tomorrow on Tuesday, September 8th, a book I collaboratively wrote in called Her Unraveling is launching into the world. In honor of the fact that this book is about connecting to your intuition and listening to your feelings, I decided to pull cards for you guys and at the end of this episode, I'm going to share an excerpt from the book and and get you guys really feeling into it. And I would love to have you join us in the virtual launch party on Facebook called Her Unraveling Launch Party. It's a group you can just join in and uh, we're gonna have readings from each author in there and a lot of giveaways. So we would love to have you join us in there. And I will start with the card readings. So I drew cards from the Goddess Power Oracle deck by Colette Baron reed The Divine Feminine by Megan Watterson and the Healing Mantra deck by Matt Kahn. And you guys, the cards like couldn't be more aligned for what this book represents. So the first card I drew was Ben Benzai Tai 10. Sorry, Benzai 10. Beauty. Empowerment message. You are at your most lovely when you are being yourself. The Japanese goddess of beauty, Benzai Ten, reminds you that knowing, accepting, and honoring yourself as a spiritual being in a physical body requires self-care. Now is the time to support yourself by surrounding yourself with beauty and choosing to see its power in every aspect of your life. If you can commit to doing that, you will be amazed at how much more beauty arises to greet you. Open your eyes to the wonder everywhere, even in the most unexpected places. Beauty waits to be discovered. Consider this before you turn away from a person, place, or thing. Beauty is everywhere. It's your time to find it, and the goddess Benzai Ten will help you. Alignment message. Your ability to see beauty in your world is dimmed by a momentary lapse in self-worth. The goddess of beauty asks you whether you've been set back by a visit of perfectionism or others have withheld their support, causing you to feel small and insignificant. Whatever the circumstances, it appears that you have been hijacked by a sense of lack. Your alignment task is to restore your self-worth and regain your equilibrium by refusing to engage in these mind games designed to dim your light. Now is the time for a positive self-inventory. The goddess Benzai Ten is here to remind you that you are a bright, shiny, beautiful being of divine power and light. You are more than enough, and the world contains more than enough beauty for you. This is a good place to dust off and start again. And why I think these cards are so interesting, you guys, is if you get the chance to read my chapter as well as the many other chapters in these books the cards that came up for this episode to share with you to hopefully love and support on you 
just completely align with the message that this book represents. And I didn't pull these cards specifically for that reason. I shuffled the decks like I always do. And this is what came out. The second card that came up was Athena, which is knowledge. Empowerment message. Athena, the Greek goddess of intellect and strategy, says knowledge is power, and you are in a perfect position to gain greater clarity at this time. Your hard work is paying off, and everything you have learned about life has brought you to this moment in time. Your knowledge, logical choices, and intentions are aligned with divine will. Your intellect is keen, and your mind is clear. You know what you have to do. Right now, the world is making sense. You don't have to question or debate it. You can take things at face value. If you think it adds up, that's because it does. Have courage, my love. Your most precious dreams are within reach. The goddess Athena will help you. Alignment message. Sometimes logic just isn't enough to determine the truth of your situation. Right now, things don't add up or make sense, so you may find yourself distrustful. Ingenuity and curiosity are called for as you face the unknown. Don't jump to conclusions. All the information has yet to be revealed, and it won't come by force, nor by overthinking and overanalyzing. Athena offers you the alignment task of releasing any projected story or expectations and accepting that you don't have all the facts needed to make an informed choice. Ask for clarity, remain open and receptive, then wait for the will of the divine to respond. This is the correct and most beneficial strategy now, and the goddess Athena is ever present to help. I can't wait for you guys to read this chapter like it's it's just all about this stuff but I loved how beauty and intellect both came up because all of us on this planet are a beautiful combination of both and when we can really lean into that and give ourselves full love and compassion for all parts of our being we wake up to the divine within us the next card that came up was Mirabai the saint of true freedom. Love is what sets me free. I am married to my own soul. Who she is, and I have to apologize if I mispronounce some of the things in this explanation. Um, I'll do my best. Mirabai embodies a love that lets us do what, what's right for our own lives, no matter what others might think. Mirabai, or Mira, is a Bhakti poet and mystic from Rajasthan, India. She was born a princess in the late 15th century. She unwillingly married Baj Raj, the crown prince of Mewar, in 1516, but she considered Krishna to be her true husband. Legends say that her husband's family tried to kill her several times for defying the social customs and expectations of a wife. But in each of these legends, Mirabai's love for Krishna would miraculously save her. She wears the Krishna Talaka forehead marking as a sign of her devotion to him. Northern India in the 16th century was besieged by violent battles between Hindus and Muslims. Mirabai's husband, father, and father-in-law all died in the war with the Islamic army of Babur. The founder of the Mughal Empire, Mirabai refused to join her husband on his funeral pyre and again defied social and cultural expectations. She became the central poet saint of the Bhakti movement during this difficult period in Indian history. The Bhakti movement is a spiritual path focused on the cultivation of a personal love for the divine. It's a devotional form of worship that believes anyone can have direct access to the divine regardless of sex, caste, or religion. Mirabai became the symbol of people suffer suffering under the caste system and the persecution that in ensued if anyone tried to defy social and political standings. Mirabai's poems are lyrical padas, 
or love songs using metric verses. And they are so widely known and cherished because they relate an ultimate freedom that Mirabai lived out in her love for Krishna. When your soul selects her card, often without even realizing it, we make choices based on external expectations on how we think other people will perceive our actions. Mirabai is about doing what's right for you and no one else. Ultimately, only you can know what needs to be done or said. You have this one brief life and every second of it matters. Mirabai is about standing up for what you know is right for you, even if others will judge you for it. The fear of being persecuted can convince us not to be true to who we really are. There's a love though that's far larger than human constructs and cultural values. Love isn't ethical. Love isn't bound by any idea of what's socially acceptable. Love is what sets us free from the expectations that bind us. Love is whatever way it, it finds us. Love in whatever way it finds us asks us to stay loyal to our own soul. Any outside force or person who asks us to betray our most intimate relationship with the divine isn't acting out of love. For Mirabai, her true husband wasn't the one she was married to. The love that made her brave, the love that inspired her every poem and action, was a divine love for Krishna. So the laws that bound her to the strict expectations of being a wife didn't actually apply to her. Love asks us to look at what really matters to us and at what we truly value. And love asks us to bravely defy expectations in order to be true to ourselves. Love wants us to marry our own soul. Your soul voice meditation is to ask yourself, what holds me back from expressing my truth? And your intention, love is what sets me free. I am married to my own soul. The next card that came up for us is activating the third eye. And the mantra that we are to repeat is, I am willing to see beyond my beliefs, ideas, and conclusions. I am willing to see beyond my beliefs, ideas, and conclusions. As your third eye opens, you are able to notice how each moment is a catalyst for your ever-expanding soul. Through your third eye, you will be able to more clearly see the lessons each moment offers, allowing every encounter to help you become an even more radiant expression of your highest potential. This mantra is ideal for dissolving personal judgments, developing more patience, and tempering inner conflict. And the mantra again is, I am willing to see beyond my beliefs, ideas, and conclusions. And all of this ties together so nicely because I now want to share with you the titles of each chapter within the book. And then I'll share my expert excerpt that I want to, to share with you guys. So here's the chapter titles. Chapter 1, Finding Inner Peace Through Unrest. Chapter 2, Presence is a Gift. Chapter 3, The Labor of Cultivating Compassion. Chapter 4, Reparenting the Inner Child. Chapter 5, A Message from the Bees. Chapter 6, Wake the Wild Within. Chapter 7, Goddess, Thy Name is Destroyer. Chapter 8, Fragments. Chapter 9, Rising from Depression, Falling into Trust. Chapter 10, The Divinity Within Us. Chapter 11, Awake the Wild. Chapter 12, You Are Your Own Savior. Chapter 13, A 3% Chance. Chapter 14, Chasing Happy. Chapter 15, This is the Rhythm, This is the Beat. 
when I read those chapter titles, my heart just fills with joy because I know the love that was put into this and just I know it's going to serve those of you that feel called to get a copy. Here is an excerpt from my chapter to serve you all. I hope it serves you well. I had to let go of some lifelong conceptions that I had been holding on to surrounding spirituality and who I am. Being spiritual does not mean I never yell at my kid. I don't ever judge people. I never cuss and swear like a trucker. I have my shit together every minute of every day. I am all these things and still spiritual and connected. Nothing about being spiritual equals perfection. I thought it did and saw myself as not spiritual because I still did these things. Being spiritual means being all these things without judging myself for them and applying spiritual tools if my shadow does show up as a reaction rather than a response backed by love. My darkness showed up tonight in full force. It was me, but it is not of me. Temporarily, it took the reins and altered my mind and actions. I tried to fight it, tried to restrain, but she won out and her hellfire reigned, followed by her judgment and self-hatred for that which had happened. She tried to put out my light tonight, my soul the victor to retain. My physical self fell to knees and surrendered. Light bowed out to save the soul and in so doing empowered all. Now dark and light combined are presented to you, representing the divine. The two live in me in perfect harmony, one step at a time, holy divinity intertwined. That's all I can share with you guys at this time, but if it interested you, please reach out to me on the socials and I will get you a signed copy. Um, again, even if you don't buy a copy, that's totally okay. I don't want anyone to feel pressured. I'm just so excited that this piece of work is coming into the world that I couldn't wait to share it with you guys. I really do hope you have a truly incredible week. And I want you to know you are divine. That poem at the end there that, well, it's not at the end, it's in the middle of the chapter, but that I ended with, that holy divinity intertwined, that's, that's you, that's me, that's us, that's all of us. We are this holy, intricate, divine being, all wrapped up, our shadow and our light combined, all parts of us, beauty and intellect and soul, just this beautiful piece of this universe and you're here at this time for a reason because your voice needs to be heard so like that one card asks what's holding you back from speaking your truth share your wisdom with the world share it with yourself trust yourself believe in yourself know that whatever higher power you believe in loves you so much and that you are loved by every person on this planet in some way, shape, or form. Even those that hate you still have feelings for you. So that's a form of love. It's hard to explain in a short podcast, but I truly believe that we are all love and we are all interconnected. And even the people that don't like us there's a part of them that does they're just going through something and if we just share love I got caught on my words there if we share love we receive love now that doesn't mean like the beginning of my excerpt read that we are always going to get it right we are going to make mistakes we aren't always going to like all people and that's not what being spiritual is all about either but you can send them love from a distance. I hope you have a fabulous week, each and every one of you. Know that I am here. I hear you. I'm here to support you. And if there is a topic you would like to hear about on this podcast, please send me a message because I'm here to serve you in whatever way you need. 
Until next time, take care of yourselves, love on yourselves, and really make your self-care practice an appointment in your schedule like a doctor's appointment because it is so important to care for that beautiful soul of yours so that you can give from an overflowing cup. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being here. I love and adore you. You are beautiful. I want to invite you to join the Awaken Your Inner Light Facebook community. It's a sacred container for anyone who is feeling it's time for a change in their life. This group is for you to be able to come in and be your whole self. You will be provided with the tools to awaken your inner light and live your most vibrant life. In this group, we're getting people to ask questions and share openly and vulnerably. We're all there to share and support one another. You can come in, drop the masks and the armor, and allow yourself to be truly seen. Together in this space, we're creating a light revolution, and we'd love to have you join us. The website is www.facebook.com backslash groups backslash awaken your light. That's A W A K E N Y O U R L I G H T. I can't wait to welcome you in this sacred space. Until we meet again, lean in to get soulful. Thank you for meeting me soul to soul today on the Soulful Podcast. If this episode connected with you and you feel called to, please share it with your friends and family so they can feel the love as well. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe on your podcast player so you get notified when new episodes drop. Please leave a rating and comment so I know what's touching your soul the most and can bring you more of what you long for. If you have suggestions for topics or would like me to speak at your event, please connect with me at S-O-U-L-F-U-L-L-S-O-B-R-I-E-T-Y at gmail.com. Thank you for your love and support in helping me connect with more souls to remind them they are divine, capable, and loved. You're the best. Go out looking at the world through the lens of love.